So um, why you were locked out? Any mess hall? Any mess hall problems? Mess no, hall fights? No, no, no problems? No fights? No, I, I got into just like a little normal stuff. If you ever been to prison, your your conversations come through sports and just just normal, normal, normal everyday prison stuff, but nothing, no craziness. Nobody no. hating and saying no. Nah, uh, nah, so to speak, you just I was in there like you have an opportunity to go to prison, you do this. Either uh, get involved into the nonsense or you handle your business. Right. And so I was a guy identified as somebody who handled their business. I didn't yeah. get into all of the, the prison gangs, prison culture, prison everything. You can get into that if that's what you were choosing right. to do. Right. Right. But I was a guy who knew, like people knew like, yo, bro ain't here for none of this nonsense. He's do here my to time. do his time and, and go ahead and go home. Okay, then you released after three, three years, 11 months, yep. and then start, you start thinking about what you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. What was the first thing that you did because you were released because you were a model inmate? So yeah. you had to go into a halfway house and continue on with some programs yeah. that were. Yeah, so I continued on with the program and then got out uh, fall of 2010. Uh, went to Omaha, Nebraska, played football from uh, 10 to 12 uh, and 13. ESPN had come to me and they said they would like to do a documentary on my life. This is after the halfway house now. After of the halfway the house. Yeah, so I got out 2010. So then 13 uh -huh. through. Let's say 15, uh, I started to public speak a bunch. In middle of 14, I started a trucking company and a packaging company. So I started a trucking company and a packaging company, uh, sold that off, uh, eventually getting into some of what I'm into now. I started a company called The Red Zone, mm. who's a, we're a mental health and drug and alcohol agency. And we um, service adolescents and adults who have different mental health and drug and alcohol issues. And how long did it take you to do this? This is because you released in what year? 2010. 2010. And uh -huh. And now you, how long did it take you to? So the first thing I got into trucking took me about three years. And that was, no, 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 that was about five years because I yeah. saved money up from 13 to 15 to basically get into a trucking company. And you're looking for housing. Did you get turned down? being? A yeah, I got, got turned down a bunch of housing just because right. I was a convicted felon. felon. Yeah, and so I'm going Crazy. around from place to place to place to place. And eventually I found a lady uh, whose son had been incarcerated. And so you didn't let her get frustrated, you finally found something? No, lady. so I have to, because at this time I got a, a daughter, she's, what at that time, eight, seven, eight years old, and so you have to find some places. So, you know, whoever opened their doors up to me at that time, I was like, yo, I gotta go ahead and figure, whatever situation I gotta figure out from here. You know what I'm saying? And so- Was she born while you were inside? She was two weeks when I got locked when up. When you got locked up? Yep. Wow. And then you come home now. She's uh, what, almost four years old. Yeah, she's four. She's a functioning child at this point. You know what I mean? Right. Did you get visits from? Uh, yeah, I got visits all the time, time from, from, yep. from from them, right? Okay. So now you find your you find your housing. You finally get with this lady that helps you out. Yep. And then you have your business and, and you start to get in touch with the older people, Jim uh, Coach Trestle. Uh huh. How yeah. did you? How did what yeah, made got you do? Got in touch with him and just was like, you know, I just was. Um, how that conversation go? No, I just reached out to him. Yo, I'm home. You know what I'm saying? And, and just really wanted to reconnect it. And, and I think more than anything, just um, just reconnect with an old coach or old friend. Just let them know, like, your, your growth. You know what I'm saying? When people coach you, like, they are a representation of your father in a lot, you know, a lot of ways. Yeah. Because they see you in so many different ways than your father would see you or your parents would see you. And so we're just like, yo, you know, I'm back in... Uh, just trying to figure life out. Didn't need from something from him. Just we just reconnected. Okay. And at this time, this is he was already because uh, he had his problems with NCAA. Yeah, he was so, still out of Ohio State though at this time. Uh, at the time when you did get in touch mm -hmm. with him. So well, while you're out now, then he has uh, his issue. He has his issue. Yeah. Did you when you did uh, uh, reunite with uh, Coach Tressel, Did you let him? Did you apologize to him? Did he apologize to you? Because no, th that so it seemed like he just dis distanced himself. No. So we, all that oh. stuff took place in prison. In oh, prison. So okay. when I was in prison, we wrote back and forth to each other. But then you go through a level of just like acceptance and forgiveness, like you know, like stuff happened, and you know you can be, uh, you know, you can be in the moment, and, and in the moment you're mad and you're silly, but then you gain higher perspective on something, and um, and, and then you walk away from it, or you just call it for what it is. Like I'm telling you, I read you know Power versus Force by Dr. David Hawkins, Transcending Levels of Consciousness, um, Truth versus Falsehood, and that whole series of books was all about. Uh, becoming more conscious and aware of your situation. And so whatever anybody does, they're just doing it, functioning at their level of awareness or consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so you really can't get mad and act like they're doing you wrong on purpose. They're just functioning as they know how to function. To function right. And it just is what it is. And, and just as you go, you just avoid that stuff and, and you stay away from it. And that's, that's the nature of the beast of what I was going through.